we're going to sing a carol. We are. A Christmas carol. What would you like to sing? Um, uh, I love my carol. Christmas. That's my favourite one. How did you know? Well, because I'm just too good. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see today, we are joined by some special guests. A few months ago, earlier in the year, we did one of these like girl talk advice style videos. Except I wasn't here because we'd fallen we'd fall out. out. Yeah, we had um, to. And it's a bit awkward this time because um, we've fallen out with Maria now. So yeah. um, unfortunately, she's not here. I did ask if she wanted to come anyway, but she told me well, I, I can't, can't even bring say, myself to say it. You can't say it on here. It's probably not safe for like public. <laughs> this video would get demonetized. <laughs> just, just to clarify, because last time people did believe us. <laughs> That's not true. No. Maria's just busy. Yeah. yeah um, too busy for us. <laughs> and fair enough. Do you want to introduce yourselves? I just assume everybody knows who you introduce are. Introduce yourself then. Am I starting? Hello, I am Rudolph. Uh, but when I'm not Rudolph, I'm sometimes called Jess. Lovely. I am Chloe. I am Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just Abby. Just Hello, Abby. Just Abby. Hello, Just Abby. Hello, Just Abby. Hiya. And I'm Amy, but you know that because this is my YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> so I asked on Instagram for your dilemmas and we're going to answer them. We're a bit delirious today because we hosted a honking Mac event last night. Yeah, baby. For our events company, Girlies IRL. <laughs> <coughs> Link in bio. <coughs> so sorry if our advice is not very helpful. Oh, it will be. It will be. It will be sorry. so I helpful. That's kind of when you get the best sorry. advice when you're a bit delirious. That's yeah. true. I have a friend who is unbelievably flaky. Everyone around me says that it's served its time. What should I do? Ooh, she's a ninety-nine flake. <laughs> I love a 99 flake. I do, but not where not a friend is friendship. concerned. No. Yeah. Well, I think you have a conversation with her and you say, what's this? And then like, just see what's happening. Is it that like, she's suddenly gotten busy? Why am I saying she? They. They've suddenly gotten busy. They like, I don't know. Can you say it again as well? Because my yeah. brain's kind of gone. I have a friend who is unbelievably flaky. Everyone around me says it's served its time. I agree, it's served its time. But <laughs> communicate ask them what's the flakiness all about because you didn't go to the shop and buy a flake for a friend like see what the situation is and go from there i reckon i think also like if everyone around you says it served its time they probably know better than we do mm. if they're if that's what the people around you are saying yeah i think you often try and like preserve a friendship for as long as you can because you are like emotionally invested and it's yeah. harder to see it from an outside perspective but if there is ever a relationship or a friendship that doesn't serve you anymore unless there's like a very valid reason like if they're going through something and they need extra support but if they're just being flaky because they're not putting effort in and all the effort is one-sided then if people are telling you that it served its time they're probably right there's no point preserving a friendship that doesn't serve you anymore because that's a waste of your energy and mm. their energy if they're not putting anything into it so unfortunately some friendships aren't lifelong and it's sad but you can find new friends yeah sometimes things just run their course mm. yeah doesn't have to be like big or dramatic no yeah like us with maria yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we hate her. We'll probably have to make a post about it soon, so keep an eye out. Turn on our notifications to hear about <laughs> it. Yeah. I'm struggling with feeling like I should be happy because it's Christmas, but I've had a rough year and I'm finding it very stressful. Christmas is overwhelming. <laughs> and overrated, I think, sometimes. Like, we play, like, we always think, oh my god, it's Christmas, yeah. and you put this massive one day on a pedestal, mm. and, like, you can, sometimes I think you have these expectations in your head, and if they don't meet them, then it's awful and it's horrific and there's tears and da 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 da, -da but actually, it's just today. I think social media does have a really big role to play in this yeah. because obviously the people who love Christmas time just share it constantly and like so they should if, mm. if it's a time of year that they particularly enjoy and then obviously like brands share it a lot because Christmas is their time for making and money. And influencers. Yeah but like, it's just very like the people who love it love it yeah. but then the people who don't love it don't tend to share that they they don't love it and you don't realise that people might find this time of year incredibly difficult. I do, yeah. for several reasons. Growing yeah. up, my family dynamic at Christmas time wasn't always easy. And I used to, well, particularly when I was younger, I used to dread Christmas. And luckily I don't do that anymore because I have 
new support and new traditions like with my friends with my boyfriend and Christmas I'm sort of like reshaping what it means to me but that doesn't mean that as soon as it's december i'm like oh my god i'm so ready tis the season yeah i actually find it incredibly difficult but i just don't think you see a lot of those people speaking up about it because it's quite hard to to, to do that when everyone is so like pro christmas because you feel like a bit of a grinch well and also i think the problem is that when it comes to things like that often like similarly to jess like i have a quite a complicated family dynamic at times and i think that christmas can be really difficult but equally i share the things that i like about christmas because the stuff that i don't like is other people's business like mm. it, as in like affects more people than just me so i don't feel i can share it mm -hmm. what i can share is the little hot chocolate that i'm having at winter wonderland or the, yeah, the, ball that you yeah exactly yeah. so i think from that perspective like the messy stuff doesn't end up going online a lot of the time and that doesn't mean it doesn't exist it's not always like just your story to tell no you know? but also i think what what i've done as somebody who used to really really not like christmas very much is yeah like jess said you ref you have to kind of reframe it in your head and if you can tr try and think of it either just as something that doesn't concern you that's what it takes or as like a season of treating yourself and treating the people that you care about and like yes there is that one day or one event where you were expected to see or be subjected to like difficult situations and if the best thing for you is to remove yourself from that then you're the only person that can make that choice yeah. set boundaries don't be afraid mm -hmm. to set boundaries exactly. like if you need to just be like listen i'm just not coming to this or i'm coming to this so i'm not doing that yeah. like just because you're you feel like you have to be with your family or whatever at christmas doesn't mean you have to be there every single minute of the day no like go off and you know go and sit and watch elf by yourself that's the thing try and think <laughs> no about cares. like what is your ideal like christmas situation because everyone loves to be like cozy and like there's all the fun christmas snacks yeah. and there's christmas films like pick the parts you like and yeah. embrace them and then the rest yeah. of it we just sort of have to get ourselves through yeah. and it's not always easy but no. you're not the only person who has to do it so i find there's often a lot of comfort in in sort of knowing that other people do find it tricky as well yeah mm -hmm. absolutely and also oh i had a point but i can't remember what it was come on then come on oh, um i remembered it the other thing that i find helps is if you have that ideal thing and you set a date for you to do that so if that is boxing day if you know that christmas day is going to be hard for you have a plan for boxing day that you know is something you're looking forward to no matter how low key that is even if that's a duvet day a duvet having day a bath. yeah having no. a bath. Last walk yeah, the end or, or seeing your friends or seeing certain family members or whatever it is but like have a plan for boxing day so you can look forward to that and mm. let that carry through mm. the rest of it or the 27th if you're busy boxing day or whenever you know yeah, in yeah. that lull or just where... something to keep you going <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah don't if if you find christmas day difficult don't let christmas day be the pinnacle put no. your pinnacle somewhere else yeah. like new year's hat yeah like, as well i don't know i don't know <laughs> do you know what's it all about how should i navigate a friends with benefits having been friends for eight years before anything oh, oh scandalous oh. Well, oh. what do you mean by navigate like do you want more do you want more or is that what you want or is that's what's happening already are you asking like how to how not to catch feelings yeah that could go so many different directions yeah. couldn't it like because if you're navigate it into a relationship navigate it so it stays as it is navigate it back towards friendship because it's not working out i would assume because she hasn't said anything else that she means how to keep it as friends of benefits, friends of benefits when she already knows so much about the person no. i'm not the one to ask because there isn't i simply wouldn't be able to i mean i've been in the relationship so I i'm actually <laughs> how's your friend with benefits i mean it's working out really well <laughs> so well oh it's difficult isn't it i think friends with benefits is quite a tricky path because you're either gonna sway one way or the other you're either just meant to be friends or it's gonna snowball into something else i always think that anyway with friends with benefits i mean the film itself tells you <laughs> mila kunas is it justin timberlake yeah yeah I think it yeah. Is. <laughs> yeah that's a hard one that is hard pardon the pun lol <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> well, exactly uh, uh, go on chloe I don't I, feel like I, I, I don't know a lot about that sort of situation because whenever I've been in that 
not sort of situation but it's always one side of the party doesn't want to commit to something more mm. so it's just left as is so if you feel like you want more from the friends with benefit situation then and they can't give it to you you might need to leave it where it is mm -hmm. and move on mm -hmm. but then if you want the relationship with this person but they've suggested friends with benefits. I don't know. It's a hard yeah. question because we don't know the backstory. It's but true, it yeah. the direction you want it to go in. I feel oh, like yeah. as the resident girly that has had the most relationships and, and most situationships, etc. My take on it would be that communication is incredibly important. Say, Particularly yeah. if you have been friends for <laughs> such a long time, mm -hmm. you walk a really fine line between if it all goes wrong, you lose a, a friendship that you had in your life as a constant for it for such a long time. Like eight years is really significant yeah. and you don't want to mess that up. So I think you both need to be really clear about like what you want and if that is just to be friends with benefits. And you need to be honest about that yeah, as well. Yeah absolutely. Yeah. If it is just to be friends with benefits and it's sort of working out that you're just pals who do sometimes the naked dance. Yes, they then can dance. Like you fair enough. On, girl, yeah like yeah. absolutely like that's great. But if it gets to a stage where like one of you is catching feelings, again you need to be honest and you need to communicate that because yeah. if you're not both on the same page, that's when the whole relationship is yeah no, that's like when it gets really toxic and the friends with benefits part isn't actually serving you you would enjoy a relationship yeah like, or like, it just becomes a big risk that it all falls apart and you, and you lose someone that you've cared about for an incredibly long time and also yeah. like a key word in friends with benefits is friends like yeah. if you're not communicating through it then you're probably not friends anymore in which case what are you doing yeah <laughs> just talk to each other be honest and if the sex is really good then I'm proud of you. Woo, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's not, then just keep us friends. Greg's here! That's our friend with benefits. <laughs> <laughs> Greg is here. Oh, Greg. Greg! We love Greg and his benefit. Merry Gregmas. How do I cope with a very negative friend who can't see the good in anything? She has a lovely home life, family, husband. She makes a fortune, but she's always miserable. Her mood brings me down and she bombards me every day. Help me, please. Pretty sad. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Depends where you think that's coming from. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend some professional help for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Figure out where it's coming from. Yeah. Yeah, but also you're not a therapist, girly. Or you might be, but not. But even if you are, <laughs> not not to this girly. Fair enough. Like if she needs to air grievances, whatever, or she needs to have a little complain. I mean, we'll have a little wine. Cool. But there comes a point where it's like you're giving vacuum, mm -hmm. and you need to like. Yeah. What is it coming from? That's exhausting mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah. Like, where That's is it really coming hard from? Being on, the, on the receiving end of. Yeah. Like, it, it's hard being so negative all the time because you get stuck in such a like a, a cycle mm -hmm. of being that way. But it's really hard being on the other side of as well mm -hmm. because then it, it feels like if your friend is always complaining to you about everything going on in their life, when it, it looks from the outside like they they really have do been. have quite a, a lot of boxes ticked. Yeah. It's really difficult to hear that, particularly if you're going through anything that they're then not really giving you the time to mm. like talk about and that they're not giving you the support the support that you need and i find that often the people who are like that that are really negative all the time are the ones who tend to be a little bit more like self-involved and don't give you as much time and say oh well i'm having a bit of a rough time but how are you doing because even yeah. if we are all having a bad day we'll we'll do a little vibe check in the morning we're like how yeah. are the vibes of all of the girlies yeah. and even if it's a couple of us having a bad day we'll take it in turns get all our shit on the table mm -hmm. get any support that we need or any like just you know get something off our chest but we all have each other's backs yeah but i find that if you're saying Watch that it's really ways. draining it sounds like she's really not got your back and mm. that's that's not good for you. Mm. In school, I think we have this massive assembly and it's like, uh, people you're friends with, are they apps or are they chargers? Do they drain mm. you? Like, you're like social energy and your emotional energy. Mm -hmm. Or do they charge you? Do they like boost you, you back and, up? Then. Yeah. You should feel better after leaving your friends, not worse. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You should not have friendships that don't serve a purpose of like making your life feel more fulfilled or uh, happy. Th mm. And obviously people go through things. Like if someone's going through a difficult time, we're not saying to be like, sack them off if they're, if no, they're making you feel rubbish. They're having a bad time. Get yeah, rid of yeah. anyone. <laughs> if it's like a constant thing, you have to look after yourself to a certain level. Yeah. Like. If you honestly don't think it's gonna change, 
then either you need to have a conversation with them mm -hmm. or set some boundaries. Mm -hmm. it, even if you don't convey those boundaries to them, but even if you say, when they text me, I'm gonna wait half an hour until I reply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so it means that you call. don't get stuck in this like tornado. Yeah, or, or just sort of if they, I find a lot with these kinds of people, they sort of make statements knowing that they want you to go, oh, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. And actually sometimes you sort of hit a point where you go, I'm actually not gonna do that because it, it just keeps this cycle going. I had a friend once that <laughs> she literally had me sat in my car because she was so upset. She was sat in my car and she went, I've got no friends. I've got, I've got no friends. And she was literally so distraught. She was like, I've just got no friends. I went, you've got me, da da da, and da da da. And I went, you, you, like, it doesn't matter how many friends you have, like, yeah. we're here Policy for you. you wanted to. Yeah, and mm -hmm. like- Imagine it, saying that with your chest, in, like when, in when you're saying car. that to a friend, yeah. In like, my car, I was like, absolute <laughs> audacity. It's one of those things where it's like, come back down to reality yeah. and realize that like, you're, you're there for her. And like, it doesn't matter how many friends you have. It doesn't matter. I don't know. I think maybe she needs a little reality check as well to be like, hiya, I also exist and I also have feelings and I'm yeah. having a shit time or like, oh, this is what's happening with me. Yeah. And then if they then or go, even, oh, sorry. but me, I'll be like, okay, well, it's, it's the you show. Okay, see ya. Yeah. But even if you're not having a shit time, do they still know what's going on in your life? Like, yeah. even if it's not that you need support and they're not giving you it, but it's like, do they actually know what's going on in your life or, or are they only ever talking about themselves? Yeah. And it's like, it's hard because if they are a really good friend, you obviously want to, to get them help to sort of get them to change that mindset and, and get them back to where, why you were obviously friends in the first place because mm -hmm. you yeah. don't become friends with someone who is horrible all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, but equally, you do have to look after yourself as well. So it's, I don't know. Yeah. It's a tricky one. Like, yeah. you're her friend, but is she yours? Mm. Oh, that's a good mm. one. Yeah. Ah. And also, not to blow our own trumpets, but I think we have a very healthy mm. friendship, mm -hmm. particularly for a group of girls. I know that mm. quite often those can turn quite toxic. We, we are very lucky, and I think maybe it's because we've met in later life, and mm. we all just sort of happen to have the, the right personalities for each other. But if one of us is having a terrible time, then... That doesn't mean that the other person, that other people can't talk about something else they're doing that's totally off topic mm -hmm. and fun. Like, it's nice to have the balance. We just like to keep tabs on people. Yeah. 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 And there's five of us. Naturally, there is always something going something. on. Something. Yeah. But like, I think, yeah, if it gets to a point where the only conversations you ever have are like, oh, this, this is, is terrible, shit. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then either have the conversation with them or figure out how you can remove yourself. Because you can never control them. You can only control you. It's a yeah. conversation that needs to be had though of like, yeah. well, what's going on here? But yeah. Don't be afraid to also take a step back and You can't help look someone that doesn't want to be helped. No. Mm. So true. My uncle is your typical pompous old man and I'm stuck next to him for Christmas dinner. I need some excuses to get out of talking to him. Oh. Oh. Have you seen them really garbled TikToks where it's like, so if they're in a situation ship, this is very different. <laughs> you can apply it here. And they're like, apologies, this conversation no longer serves me. I <laughs> hope this, I hope you, I can't, I need to find it. The thing is, I do, I get that vibe, but I think, cause it's an uncle, cause of the generational thing, oh. I don't think, they'd, they'd, they'd yeah, be like, yeah. what, what are you talking about? I'm oh, gonna carry on. Kids these days, you, you can't say anything well, no. about <laughs> anything. Did no you place. have diarrhea that day? Yeah. Oh yeah. Spend a really no. long time in the oh, toilet. Make it a game, this is what I would do. Play bingo with yourself. So like, come mm -hmm. up with like, things that you want to try and make him say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or things that you like already expect to be on the cards because the thing is people like that often have a bit of a repertoire don't they of things that they like always do like up their sleeve yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you know some of them will make comments about weight or they'll be or, or it'll be about like your job or something, relationships or, or whatever. something offensive yeah like, yeah they've always got to come up with something because they know that it's a topic of conversation yeah do they have like an opinion that is yeah. maybe not a, a good opinion to have <laughs> yeah. got a little fun bingo card yeah that's yeah. actually quite a good idea <laughs> Make a game, have a shot if you're a drinker. Every time they say something that you don't agree with, yeah. knock one back and have you'll soon forget scroll. what they say. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, if you've got someone else at your table who you can share that game with, mm. that would be quite funny. Yeah. Do a little look across and go, Put a prize, prize on the line. Yeah. 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 Even if they're a bit further away, just having that little bit of eye contact of support yeah. often goes a long way. That's actually such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that. <laughs> I quit school school due to mental health and I can't find a job. I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed. 
any advice? There's lots of resources out there that are very helpful for people that don't necessarily have a lot of skills, but they can like convert them skills into things that people were looking for mm -hmm. for jobs. Mm -hmm. Like the Job Centre website has loads of good resources like that. So for example, if you're like at home and you enjoy reading, you can be like, yes, keeps up to date with current affairs, that sort of thing. But it's like mm -hmm. switching your knowledge into someone that thinks you're employable, if that makes sense. Yeah, like mm -hmm. on your CV, using those correct keywords, isn't yeah. it? And also like, obviously we don't know your situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But genuinely, I find that a lot of people when they are applying for jobs, they like send out the same exact CV with a, the same cover letter or no cover letter. Mm -hmm. You need to stand out. So if you're not already doing those things, make little tweaks that suit the job. Send a cover letter that explains a little bit about you and a little bit about what you think you can bring to the role. There's gonna be loads of resources online for like how to write an effective one. But just, thing is it doesn't take very long and it doesn't need to take very long, especially once you've done a few. Mm -hmm. But like just mm -hmm. spend a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes on the application because genuinely that can make the difference between getting an interview or not get, getting an interview. Yeah. But also don't give up on it. Your time will come. Everything happens for a reason. And as soon as you get a job and as soon as the, things feel like they're sorting themselves out, the timing of it will feel perfect no mm -hmm. matter when that happens yeah. yeah and as well as like resources that help you sort of fine tune your cv there's also like little online courses that you can yeah. that you can do that don't need to be anything difficult like if you haven't finished school and there was a sort of a reason for that i think was did it say mental health yeah i know it can feel then quite like daunting to then commit to something like an online course but there there are lots of like short ones even on something like say Skillshare or what are the other ones called? Oh, Google have loads of yeah, they do. And then oh, yeah. um, you, Udemy is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Um, stuff like that where they don't have to take a very long time, so it's not a huge commitment. Particularly if your your mental health sort of doesn't allow for like a lot of concentrating and, and committing, because I know how difficult that can be. But if you have a particular career or like job role in mind, you can find stuff that's really specific yeah. to brush up on specific, oh, specific <laughs> skills yeah. that will really help you and will look great on your CV to say that you know, you've been proactive enough to do the additional learning and just sort of, it, it shows that you're you're willing to, to really put some effort in. And I think that also looks great on a CV. Yeah. And I think what Amy said about tailoring CVs is great because I did that as I was leaving uni and applying for lots of different jobs I every single CV I sent out was different mm -hmm. even if it was like only a few changes I really looked at what that particular role wanted because even though I was at, at the time I was applying for like PA roles but each PA role was different because they they had a different scope of work or they it was in a different industry mm -hmm. so none of the cvs and the applications i could make were the same and i do think that really helped me because when i sat down in my interview for the job that i got that my boss said your cv was brilliant and it really stood out and i also made it quite colorful as well so it was eye catching mm -hmm. i i made it like mm -hmm. one that visually you would want to remember and i think that's kind of like quite a good like psychological like trick of the eye mm -hmm. Yeah. sort of like yes. remember me so these don't just have to be black and white guys yeah. mine i think was like yeah. peach nice oh, that's fun. but like just a big banner across the top that had like my name and information in so it was still easy to read my information but it still sort of separated me from the rest that's very um, good yeah also speak to your friends and family yeah mm -hmm. the people around you that have got jobs that you would be interested mm -hmm. in or the thing is like sometimes you might say to someone do you know if your your work's hiring anywhere and they go or well, mine isn't, but my sister's is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or something it's like that. Like, you really mouth. never know. Like, it's worth. Or even if you get someone else to help with your CV to double check it, yeah. because you might have forgotten about skills that you've got, and they say, oh, but you're really good at X, Y, Z, and, yeah. you know, are you a great communicator, but you haven't written that down? Because sometimes it's really easy to be self-deprecating, or, like, you're it can be difficult to be your own champion and say yes i'm really good at these things yeah. mm -hmm. but someone that is close to you and knows you very well they'll they'll be able to say well you're really good at picking up things quickly whenever i try and t tell you about something you you know it straight away or yeah. you are good at communicating your written skill is great you're you know you've got a great telephone manner i don't obviously I, it's different for yeah. every role so these are all very generic things but don't be afraid to ask for help yeah. because someone will be able to sort of shine a light on you maybe better than you can if you're not feeling particularly confident at the minute particularly if you haven't had any luck finding a job so far it can knock the way you feel but having that little boost of someone being like well you are really good at x y and z it can just 
Put a little pep in your step and help. Yeah, yeah that's a really good idea. Mm. Thanks. So in that case, I think that is us done. Is yeah. it? Sweet. Yeah, that was this quick. Is, this is the last you will see of us all together, I think, this year. Yeah, yeah we're, we're breaking oh, up. Yeah. We're breaking up. We're just bounding the Spice yeah. Girls. Yeah. Um, I mean, Girlies IRL still, still kicking about, but like, mm. we won't. Yeah, I mean, that's a lie by the way. We firmly are staying with <laughs> Girlies IRL. I am also going to be doing weekly vlogs from January. So, and I'm going to make sure she does. Yeah, she you is. You'll a lot more of us on this Yeah, channel, you'll be seeing then, a lot really. more of us and Maria maybe if we make friends mm, again. Yeah, we'll She's see. got some apologising to do though, yeah. so we'll see about that one. Yeah. <laughs> I will take bribes. <laughs> I, yeah, actually, we all will. In the form of chocolate. <laughs> always yeah. yeah, so thank you for watching. We hope you have a lovely Christmas if you celebrate Christmas and if you don't. Hope you have, have a, a nice Saturday. December. Yeah, <laughs> a lovely December. And we'll see you in the new year. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Sorry, I found that I was talking a lot during that one. No, it's fine. Did you meant to talk, that's why they've asked. Well, I've had a lot of sex and I've had a lot of jobs, so. Well, that's what I was <laughs>